right, everybody, I'd like to uh, thank you for coming to this presentation here. This is going to be a little bit like speed dating. So uh, we're going to go through 30 tips and 30 minutes in SOLIDWORKS. We're going to start off with uh, kind of go to the sketch portion, then part portion, move up to assemblies, and then we're going to wrap things up with just some general system options that are, be, that are, are some of my favorite tips. Um, and my name is Will Kefauver. I'm one of the support engineers here. So let's move right along. One of my favorite tips uh, when you're working with a really, you know, kind of hairy sketch, this one isn't too bad, but it'll help us get the point. When we are editing a sketch, you know, sometimes all these automatic relations can be kind of helpful, but say they're a little annoying, it's automatically trying to snap to different things. You know, we wake up a circle, and it'll uh, add all of these, you know, options to snap to it. But let's say we want to ignore that. Go ahead and press the control key on your keyboard, right? And then it will no longer snap to anything. So you can just place that line arbitrarily wherever you want to. All right, so Power Trim, one of our favorite tools that we know and love. Let's say we are, you know, accessing Power Trim, but we're getting a little rambunctious here. See, we accidentally Power Trim something that we don't want to trim. Well, fortunately, we can just go backwards and cross this red dot right here, and it will restore the last thing that we power. Moving right along. Now, you guys may have missed this in the uh, your essentials class, but let's say we're trying to place this dimension right here to the outside. As many of you know, by default, when you're trying to place a dimension to a circular entity, it's going to snap to that center line. Well, the way that you can quickly and easily place dimensions to the outside of circular entities by holding down shift when placing your dimension. Just like that. See how it goes to the outside of that circular entity? All right, and one of my favorite tools on the sketch level is called the sketch expert. So let's say we're getting a little rambunctious here. We know that we want this arc to be tangent to this line right here. It's pretty much fully defined. So we know we're gonna break some things, but no problem, we don't really care. We're being a little reckless here. We're gonna make that tangent. Uh-oh, we get this warning, overdefined. Fortunately, what we can do is just go ahead and click on this overdefined message and then select diagnose. Now what this does is this will bring us through a bunch of results where we can kind of troubleshoot which is the best solution for us. Upon hitting accept, you can see that it resolves our sketch. So it automatically finds which, you know, dimensions or relation that we want to get rid of. All right, so let's move on to the parts portion here. So something that's really cool is the normal two with two selections. As many of you know, if you select a surface, you can go ahead and get normal to that surface. But let's say, you know, we want to be normal to with a different view orientation. Well, we can select two faces where the second face will become up in that normal view. So I'm gonna select this face right here, hit Control A to go normal, and you'll see that that face is now facing up. Just to make sure I'm not lying, we can do this one right here and confirm that the second face is up when snapping normal to. All right, something that's real slick is called the previous selection option on the part level. Let's say that we are grabbing a ton of edges for maybe a fillet or something we're trying to pre-select. We're holding down control, selecting a bunch of different things. And suddenly we click off screen and we just lost that selection. We'll have no fear if we right click out in the graphics area, we'll get this pop-up menu where we have the option for previous selection. So upon pressing that, it will regenerate that selection series that we were just going through, saving us a bunch of time. We don't have to go through 
remember what things we just selected. Another thing that's really slick is being able to press the D key for your for your breadcrumbs. So what are breadcrumbs? Well, it's whenever you select, you know, any particular entity, you'll get this kind of trail of options up here that lead up to creating that. You'll see this is the boss extrude. We have the option to select the body, do something to the part, or, you know, the feature. And if we select these guys, we have our pop-up menu where we can choose to edit it or suppress it. But the only thing is that this breadcrumbs, by default, will always be in that upper left corner. Well, when we select the entity and then press the D key, that snaps the breadcrumbs right to our mouse so we can fully utilize those. Another really slick thing that we can do is use the uh, save view. So say we have a particular area of this model we're worried about. Maybe we're worried about this right here, crossing over here. Instead of constantly having to go back to this area and remember where it is, we can make this a saved view. To do that, we can press the space bar on the keyboard here, select create new view. You can just call this uh, special. Then that view is created. So then we can press the space bar again, and our special view will be right there, and we can go to it. Another thing that's really cool that I like to use, especially if you're uh, trying to get a lot of information from a model, is model sensors. So these are right up here, right under our nose, the whole time, this sensors folder, where you can right click and add a sensor. Now, sensor is just information about the model that you can instantly grab. So we, let's say we want to add the mass and constantly monitor that. If we hit the green check, you'll see we can constantly monitor, monitor the mass instead of having to go to evaluate mass property. You can also do this for dimensions as well. Let's say I have a, uh, you know, uh, driven dimension over here that's measuring the overall length. That's something we're worried about. We can do the same old thing, add center, measurement. Sorry, add center, dimension. Select that dimension right there. And you can always keep track of that dimension. You can also do it for a measurement as well. So another thing that's really cool is the F5 keys, as many people call them, or uh, a lot of people like to call them the purple tornado. I'll explain that a little bit later. But when you press F5 on your keyboard, you have several filter options, all right? You can choose to filter edges, say you have a particularly complicated part where you can choose to select only edges. You can also toggle on multiple ones where I'm selecting only vertices and edges and you see this little user feedback icon down at the bottom right of my cursor that is the filter entities symbol and a lot of people call that the purple tornado just because they're not aware of these options and sometimes you know you can see by default the e key will automatically have you filtering edges so sometimes uh, somebody will be typing a name or something somewhere and they will accidentally toggle on the filter edges without being aware. So that's a purple tornado. It can be used to your advantage, but it can cause you a few problems if you're not aware of it. So speaking of filtering edges, there's a pretty slick way that you can use it when creating weldments. Let's say we're designing a weldment structure that's kind of a, uh, a drafted base sort of thing. I personally like to think in 3D. I think it's a little more complicated to think in 3D sketches. So you could just build the structure, just your regular 3D geometry modeling. Then we can go to 3D sketch. Then what we can do is select filter edges and then press control A. Control A is universally known as, you know, selecting everything. So with filtering every, filtering all edges, we're going to select all edges and then do a convert 
entities. This will bring in all the edges into that 3D sketch. You can turn this filter off, exit the sketch, do a uh, delete bodies, delete that guy right there, and then now we have, just like that, a 3D sketch that can be used for adding structural members for a weldment. So just like that, it's a quick way. I actually took, use, took advantage of this uh, capability on my uh, weldments test. Saves you a lot of time. All right, so we're going to move on to the assembly portion here. And a lot of people don't know that you can uh, just hold control to copy a part. So let's say we have a bunch of existing parts here, but we want to copy one particular part. We don't have to browse to our Windows Explorer location. We can just simply hold down control and left mouse drag the part to place an extra part. Another thing that's particularly useful on the assembly level, and if you have a complicated part, is the collapse tree item. So let's say we have a complicated tree here with a bunch of different things expanded. And we want to collapse this. We don't necessarily want to go through every drop down to collapse it. What we can do is just simply on our keyboard press Shift C. So all I did was press Shift C, and that automatically collapsed everything in that tree. Save you a ton of time instead of having to hunt and peck and try to find everywhere you need collapse. Something that's really cool too that I learned pretty recently was middle mouse selection to rotate an entire assembly about an axis. So what you have to do here, let's say we want to rotate, I don't know, this whole assembly about the center line on this uh, kind of circular entity. What we can do is middle mouse select right here then you'll see that my icon, mouse icon changes. Now I'm going to middle mouse drag. This is going to rotate the whole assembly about an axis. This can be useful in something if you have a crankshaft or just a bunch of things built off of a circular entity where you want to see them rotate around like, like so. All right, and one of my favorites is uh, for rotating parts about their local axis is using the right mouse drag for free drag rotation. Let's say we want to, you know, get this inside face right here, but we don't feel like rotating around the whole assembly. Well, traditionally, we would go to assembly, the drop down, rotate component, free drag, and then drag this sucker around. We don't need to go through any of that. All we have to do is right mouse click and drag, and that will rotate this component freely about its origin in space. Another thing that's very useful is the preview window in the assembly mode. Say we want to apply a mate to this spider bracket right here, but it's pretty much pretty buried within our assembly. Well, we could, you know, just hide all these guys right here and then try to find them again and show. Or what we can do is just grab any face of this spider and then go to the component preview window. Now what's really cool about this is you can uh, select faces. You can see in both windows which faces are selected. Another really slick function of the pop-up menu on the assembly level is the view mates on a part. What you can do is go up to any part within an assembly, select that part, and then go to the View Mates dialog. This will show you all mates that are relevant to that part. You can even edit them from here and suppress them from here if you want. So notice that everything is transparent, so you can see all the mates. You get a preview of the mates that you're hovering over, and it's only showing the parts that the particular part you selected have mates with. That's view mates. Something that's really cool that uh, is kind of hidden under our nose this whole time that I didn't know about for an embarrassingly long time is the ability to search and filter at the top of the feature tree. You can do this for both parts and assemblies. 
But let's say we want to look for, I don't know, all pins in this assembly. We know we uniformly named them pin underscore something. So we can just go right up here. See, my mouse cursor changes to where I can input text and then type pin. This will bring up all the pins, almost like a Google preview search. Then we can make our changes there, whatever we wanted to. You could also just search sketch. It could bring up, you know, and show all the sketches. All right, one of my favorite things, utilities, that uh, I like to use is the mouse gestures. Many of you may have accidentally been right-clicking something and up, oh, this little menu pops up right here. Well, that is what our, we call our mouse gesture menu. So this is a little shortcut menu that is different for the assembly parts, drawings, and sketch portions, right? So on the assembly and I believe part level, by default, mouse gestures are views and save, I believe. So what you have to do is right mouse click and drag, and you can get different views. Also on the sketch level, if we right mouse drag, you'll see that we have all of these options right here to create different, you know, widely used sketch entities. I'm a big fan of mouse gestures. And also with mouse gestures, we have to mention the S key. Um, this was pretty popular a few years ago, but uh, I've since seen it being used less and less. Basically, you just press the S key on your keyboard. And the same deal for mouse gestures, depending on if you're in a sketch, part, assembly, or drawing level, you'll get a shortcut menu to add things relevant to that level. So you see on the sketch level, we have the option to add a bunch of sketch entities. Now that can be customized here in your options. No, I'm sorry, right by your options. Then the drop down for customize. And here you can easily modify your mouse gestures just by clicking and dragging and placing in this menu right here. I believe new to 2018, you can add up to 12 gestures. That's a little much for me. I'm not quite there yet, but eight gestures is very useful. And also for editing that S key menu, your shortcut bars, you can toggle and customize on the sketch, drawing, assembly, and part level. All right, a really slick tip that I like to recommend to people, particularly if you're starting off a part with a uh, very similar you know, base plate or something like that is to have default templates with features already in it. So as many of you know, to create a template, all you have to do is go to File, Save As, then go to the drop down, select Part Templates. Now let's say we're constantly making a cube or something, we could generate a cube in this area, you know, just as we would make a regular part, and select Save As, Part Template, and then every time we open that template, that cube will be there. It's like this. So now it saved us a little bit of time. You can obviously add more complex features, but those will be included in your part template. I know a lot of people that will create, uh, you know, sort of world axes with their, you know, an X, Y, and Z axis with the front plane, right plane, and then right and front plane. So they can use those for linear patterns to make their models a little more robust. As you know, if you create a linear pattern and delete an edge, you'll be left with a dangling feature. All right, a really cool function that I like to use, particularly if you uh, mess up a part or end up making something a little corrupt, is the reload feature. So basically, the, re or the reload feature in essence is closing a document and then opening the most recently saved option. So let's say we want to edit this guy right here. We add a fillet, 
let's say for some reason this causes cascading error or something, we can't hit the back key anymore because sometimes that'll happen. Control Z won't save us, but oh shucks, in our assembly, it's already been rebuilt. Well, no problem. We can just go back to the part level, go to File, Rebuild, or I'm sorry, Reload, and that will load the most recent least saved parts without corrupting every single assembly that it's in. You'll see it's marked red because by reloading the most recently saved part, it is deleting some features that are existing. We're fine with that because those features we added completely corrupted the part. You'll see it just opened the most recently saved document and updated the assembly with it. So that's a good lifeline to be aware of. And that's just in file, your file drop down menu. Some of you guys may have noticed this earlier. I'm very fond of it. It's the capability to search for commands. What we can do, let's do this at the part level. Let's say we want to search for a particular, uh, you know, a particular command that we don't necessarily remember. Well, what we can do is just go up here to this menu, go to the drop down and select commands. We can then start typing the command. Let's say, uh, I'm pretty sure there's a delete bodies or something. Oh yeah, there is. And then we could click on it to launch that feature, or we could go to this big eyeball right here, let go of our cursor, and it will automatically snap to the quickest way to get there and shoot a big red arrow out just so you can see where it is, so you can remember. You know, he might be like, yikes, I use delete key body quite a bit. I wanna have to do all this hunting. So I can add that to a different menu if I want to. Also, even if you are on files and models or something, you know, if we were to type in here, it would start looking for files. If you press W on your keyboard, it'll automatically snap this search menu to search commands, and then you can just begin typing. So your mouse can be anywhere. If you just press W, automatically you're searching for commands. All right, something, you know, some good housekeeping here is the SOLIDWORKS meta options. This is the, uh, in Windows Explorer. So this is just regular Windows Explorer. If you have Windows or SOLIDWORKS Explorer downloaded, you can within Windows functionality, do a pack and go, move, replace on any part or assembly without, you know, completely crushing all of your uh, feature references part references, file references. So if I were to right click on a SOLIDWORKS part, you see I have this SOLIDWORKS menu here where I can at the top level perform a pack and go, rename, or replace. It'll even show you where it's used so you know it'll be updating correctly. Very important to keep track of those things. All right, some of you guys may have noticed me uh, switching pretty quickly on the SOLIDWORKS level between files. A lot of people like to highlight the SOLIDWORKS menu and then, you know, just kind of look for their parts. But you can be a little more slick about it. If you, while in the SOLIDWORKS environment, press Control tab this will flip you between the two most recently used parts. So you can go back and forth. No more hunting for it, just press Control tab and if you press control tab and then keep holding on to control, you can get a menu of all of the open parts where you can then with your mouse select an open part. Something that's cool for uh, drawing views that I want you guys to be aware of, is you can press alt when you are dragging a view around. So let's say I want to drag this view around, move them around, but oh shucks, I'm grabbing the model. I'm grabbing a dimension, trying to move them around. Well, if I were to just press Alt and hover over this guy, the only option I have to do is move this view around. So regular, just left mouse clicking, I might accidentally grab a dimension when I'm moving it. Oh geez, now I have to put them back, remember where that is, hit Control Z. But you can just press Alt when over a drawing view and click and drag, and it will only drag the view around. You can also drag drawing dimensions around. 
using shift and control dragging. Let's say I want this 150 dimension to be up in this view right here. Well, I'm just going to hold down shift and drag this guy to that view. I didn't have to delete and replace that dimension. I could also just hold down control to copy. And something that saves a lot of time, I'm one of the instructors here, and uh, I showed this tip at the end of one of the classes, and one of my students calculated how much time it saves you a year, and I think it was about eight minutes a year. So we can save eight minutes a year on average by choosing the normal to sketch option automatically. So some of you, let's say I go in to edit this sketch right here. You see how it snapped normal automatically? Well, that is a system option in sketch. And it's the very first one, auto rotate view normal to sketch plane on sketch creation and edit. By default, whenever you create a new sketch, it will snap normal. But with that option checked on, every sketch that we go into edit will be snapped normal too. All right, something I want to mention is the hard rebuild. So many of you are very familiar with the rebuild, this little light sign right here. If we press control B, that is a rebuild. But sometimes the SOLIDWORKS ticker is off and uh, it's not picking up, it's not rebuilding when we press control B. What we can do is a hard rebuild, which is done by pressing control Q. There's no button in the SOLIDWORKS menu to hard rebuild, but when we press control Q, it is going, SOLIDWORKS is going to execute every single command that we have. And that should clear up any rebuild errors or any rebuilds that it missed. So that's control Q for a hard rebuild. Also something, you know, kind of top level and dorky, I thought I would mention that SOLIDWORKS can do to help protect your models is the verification on rebuild. This option is a performance option. So there are some cases where a face, you know, just recently being built will intersect with faces already in the model. So by default, SOLIDWORKS won't catch this because it only checks against adjacent faces. So say we make a change to a model or a face, SOLIDWORKS is only checking that face that you changed against the faces attached from it. But with verification on rebuild, when this is active, SOLIDWORKS is going to check the face it is building against all existing faces and model. What does all that nerd talk mean? Basically, it's a better way to prevent errors. Um, so it will prevent, you know, end triangle intersections when SOLIDWORKS is restitching some faces. And so that's very important, but it can bog down your system a little bit. So be wary of that option if you have, a, you know, a thousand feature parts. All right. Any questions? We just got it, Bob. 30 minutes. Okay. So that was some serious speed dating. Lots of features in there. Hey, can I, can I throw one of my favorites in real quick for one? Let it rip. Yeah. Um, if you pop back to the assemblies, one of my favorites is if you go to any part file and you hit the, the arrow actually in the tree, it expands out and shows you the features, right? It shows that. Well, I'm building assemblies. I want to see the mates. So if you go all the way to the top of the tree, right click, and you go to tree display, and you go to the very bottom of that flyout, there is view mates and dependencies. If you click on that, it now opens up the mates when you click on a component, and it puts the features into a folder. That's one of my favorites. Another one is you were talking about creating your own part file with features already in it. I do lots of multi-body parts. So when I do lots of multi-body parts, I will actually have a part file that if you go to the weldments command and just hit the weldment button, not, yeah, it adds the weldment feature to the top of your tree right below the origin. Every time you create a new extrusion or something that adds material, 
it unchecks merge results, allowing you to create a multi-body environment by default instead of having to go in and uncheck merge results. That's one of my favorites. Excellent. Good point. Yeah. So those those are just just two two of my little speed dating things for for today. But so we got one here. When do you use Control B versus Control Q? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I've seen this come up a lot, and I get that question a lot when I'm on support. Um, so Control B, in theory, it should work, right? You see this, uh, you know, rebuild sign. Let me go back to the slide. So say you see this rebuild sign, you know, by a particular assembly and you hit control B, sometimes that doesn't go away. And, um, you know, I'm not too sure. I didn't write the code for SOLIDWORKS, but sometimes I think just the ticker is off. It doesn't uh, internally recognize that it needs to be rebuilt. So when you hit a control Q, it's going to go line by line anyway and grab that right. part or assembly that needs to be rebuilt. So I, I've been in the in the game for for quite some time at, at around 17 years with with solar support myself, and I was around when they added Control B, and what the definition of Control B is 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 actually rebuilding the last few re regenerated features or the last few um, created features. So it may not be everything that requires a rebuild is going to get a rebuild when you do a Control B. It's just going to do the last few that you've accessed in some situations. So control Q, I, I usually always do a control Q before I do a save or an open. So Joel says, um, an FYI, control shift Q will do a hard rebuild for all configurations rather than the active configuration. Yes, it, it will yep. do that. Um, you just have to be careful how many configurations you have and how long your feature manager tree is. That might take a little while. So we've yeah. got some that customers be, that uh, have That can be how you make someone sword. commit suicide, yeah. <laughs> or make you want to commit suicide. And we don't want to do that on a Friday afternoon. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. So long drop-down menus um, have a little expanded arrow on the bottom. I saw it as a method for getting rid of the expanded arrow was to see the whole list. Can't recall how to do this. Um, I believe you have to, so to always show the expanded list, I believe you have to go to the bottom and click customize. I believe you have to turn everything on. Let's try it experiment here. Yeah, yeah I, I think you're right, Bob. Yeah. I think I think well, everything has to be is there... So I checked everything on in theory it should. Yeah. All right. Yep. Yeah, basically it's when you right click and you go to the customized menu it's going to give you the ability to say which ones are important to me to have on, and then everything else is going to be rolled up into that double down arrow. Um, got a couple of thank yous for a nice presentation, great tips. That's always good to know. Thank you very much, John and Thomas and, and Dave. This is really good stuff, Will. I really like it. Thanks, Bob. So, I appreciate everybody coming. Yeah, and if you guys have any uh questions about this presentation or anything, just feel free to email our technical support and uh, I'll find it and uh, give you a call, shoot you an email, help you out. Okay. Well, everyone, I'd like to thank you for helping us out by coming to these presentations. Um, feel free to tell your friends about these. We still have one more week of these presentations to go, so we got what, got 10 more of these. So feel free to pop into those, register on uh, www.cti.com.